Basics with Babish and my website, basicswithbabish.com, are brought to you by Squarespace. Head there now to check out all of the recipes from the show, kitchen equipment lists, and more. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order by visiting squarespace.com slash babish. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Okay, so as you may have imagined, French onion soup requires a large sum of onions. I have here three pounds of Spanish onions, which should be enough to yield about four servings of soup. To prep them, we're going to start by cutting them in half pole to pole, meaning root to tip, then slicing off the roots and the tip. And then we're going to remove this part, the basal plate or stem, as it can be a little bit tougher than the rest of the onion. Once we got that out, we're going to begin thinly slicing these onions pole to pole, which is sort of like cutting with the grain of the onion, which is going to give our slices more structural integrity so they can survive the low and slow cook. Then we're just going to rinse and repeat with the rest of our onions. Make sure that your knife is nice and sharp or bust out your favorite swimming goggles, because otherwise you're going to cry like you're watching your favorite Pixar movie for the fourth time. Now onto the stock. Ideally, we want to use homemade beef broth, but if you don't happen to have any, there are some steps we can take to soup up the store-bought version. <laughs> Did you hear what I did there? I've got six cups of high-quality store-bought beef broth to which I'm going to add some aromatics. All the usual stock suspects, some fresh parsley, a few sliced carrots, some fresh thyme sprigs, a handful of halved garlic cloves, two dried bay leaves, a sprinkle of peppered corns, and a clove or two of cloves. Then we're going to place this guy on the back burner and let it simmer for about an hour, just enough time to caramelize our onions. Into a large, heavy Dutch oven, we're going to drizzle a couple tablespoons of olive oil, let it heat up for about a minute, and then dump in our onion slice. It's going to look like way too many, but do not worry, these will cook down significantly. And now begins the process of slowly caramelizing the onions over medium heat, keeping them moving pretty constantly, scraping down the sides of the pot. No adding sugar, no shortcuts, just good old-fashioned caramelization. Now at this point we're going to remember that we have a perfectly good Parmesan cheese rind in the fridge, which is going to play real nice with our beef stock. You know that your onions are ready to go when they are soft and jammy and fragrant, and they have left a beautiful, deep, golden brown, sticky fond on the bottom of your pot. Now we're just going to add about two tablespoons of flour to the mix. This is going to add some body to our soup down the line. Cook that for one to two minutes before it's time to deglaze. I'm going to start with one cup of dry sherry, which I'm going to use to scrape up all that good stuff off the bottom of the pot. Once the alcohol is cooked off, it's time to add our strained broth to the party. Then we're just going to let this guy simmer for five to ten minutes to let the flavors get to know each other before adding some optional umami boosters. I like to add a little splash each of fish sauce and soy sauce, which is not going to to make this taste fishy or soy-y, but rather only serve to deepen our rich, meaty flavors. And there you have it, a delicious French onion soup. But French onion soup is just not French onion soup without a whole bunch of bread and cheese melted over top. So for our crouton, we're cutting up some nice thick slices of day-old French baguette, which we are going to toast. Additionally, we're going to hit them with a generous drizzling of olive oil, and of course a generous sprinkling of kosher salt and freshly ground pepper. Go ahead and toast these in a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for, I don't know, five minutes until they're toasted, you know, like toast. Then for one last big old boost of flavor, we're going to slice a clove of garlic in half and give these guys a little garlic rub down. This is just going to inform the taste buds of garlic without overwhelming the delicate flavors we've worked so hard to cultivate in our soup. One last opportunity to check for seasoning, kosher salt, and freshly ground black pepper as necessary. And then we're going to simply ladle this stuff into some broiler safe crocs. Fill it to the bottom rim, and then I'm going to hit it with a layer of shredded Gruyere cheese. Then a pair of our baguette toasts, and then a whole lot more cheese, as much as you can fit on there. Then this guy's headed under a preheated broiler for three to five minutes until golden brown and bubbly. A final garnish of chives adds a little bit of flavor and some much needed color contrast, and then it's time to dig in and annihilate the roofs of our mouths. Blow on it all you like, Andy. Ain't gonna help you. You are about to lose your sense of taste for the next few days. And while French onion soup is a little fussy and a little time consuming and a little painful to eat, I can think of few finer comforts on a cold winter's day than this French brasserie classic. This episode and many others have been sponsored by Squarespace because they've been an amazing partner in both bringing this show and my websites to life. They've got a really intuitive, easy to use platform that made it super easy for someone like me who's never done web design ever. They have templates, they do domains, they have really good customer service. It's basically a one-stop shop for building a really slick website. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today by visiting squarespace.com babish to get 10% off your first purchase. 